But why narcissists are so attracted to and tend to target more empathic people. I'm Lise Colucci, and I am here to help you understand, recover from, and transform your life after narcissism in your life and toxic people around you. I mean, it's pretty obvious to most of us that the narcissist tends to be more attracted to and drawn to and basically use empathic people. They tend to want the empaths, as we call it, right? And the more sensitive people and the kinder people in life. Why are they doing this? Because that's like the absolute worst person to be with a narcissistic person because people who are empathic would thrive in a relationship with other empathic people, right? Like we would just do so much better. But let me know in the comments as we're talking here, why do you think this happens? And what was it for you that you saw? Because what's most important here is for you in particular for your life, whoever's watching this, to figure out for yourself what it is about you that leaves you in a vulnerable position or the target, so to speak, so that narcissistic people have a way in to your world. We're all going to have our own little version of this, right? So it's really important for you to understand what it is for you so that you can sort of place boundaries around these things or create some sort of safety for yourself or learn to slow down or whatever it is for yourself. But let's just talk about some of the things right now. I have empathic people, and this isn't, this is generalizing, okay? Tend to be people who crave connection, who not only crave connection, but thrive on human connection on having relationships that have deeper meaning, more connection, closeness, intimacy, so to speak, where there is more to it than the surface stuff. Now see a narcissist, especially a covert narcissist, that is just candy to them. In fact, probably more so a covert narcissist because an overt narcissist would get bored of that real fast because what they're looking for is the more surface thing. So really what we're talking about here is the narcissist you don't see right off the bat, the more covert, stealthy narcissist. Why are they so attracted to, to people who are empathic? So when you have a strong need, desire, longing for affection and connection, and depth and relationship, it leaves you wide open and vulnerable to love bombing. A narcissist who sees that in you, if they are the type that can love bomb in a stealthy way, it will feel like a soulmate, a connection, people say a twin flame or whatever, right? It'll feel like in the beginning, you have finally met someone who is able to express themselves the way you've always wanted, the way you need, the way that nobody else in the world can't quite can for you. And that is why it's so tricky to see. And that is why we say slow down, get to know someone, but don't fall into limerence like we talked, like I talked about in a video last week. And if you do recognize this, what's happening, you can't fall in love right away. We have to get to know people. Okay. In fact, that's part of the fun is getting to know people. So this could be in any kind of relationship, not just romantic, right? This can be in friendships. This can be in, at a workplace. You can be basically schmoozed, right? Into believing that that you've got connections in that workplace. And really, you know, it could be a narcissistic person. So you, if you are vulnerable and open to that connection so much without any boundaries in place and without any time spent, you see, it, it leaves you so that they can get in, but it also is a very strong reason. And the reason that they want that connection, they want you to believe there's that connection is so that you're on the hook, so that they can groom you. They may not be highly aware of that that's what they're doing because to them, the connection you're giving them feels good, all right? It's something they can't do on their own. It's something they, they are lacking. So another thing that happens with empathic people a lot is there is a lack of clear boundary. We know this if we're here, <laughs> okay? Most people who come here and watch these videos would say, yeah, I gotta work on the boundaries. In fact, most people in the group coaching find themselves at one time or another throughout their course of time over there with me, questioning their boundaries, questioning how they can change and be more clear, concise, and, and be able to with you know maintain their boundaries. So knowing this, not all, many empathic people have very good boundaries. Let's put it that way. Many don't. So if you're a person who recognizes 
you get sloppy with your boundaries, you're soft with your boundaries, you don't know what boundaries means. You aren't able to implement having boundaries without feeling like you're hurting everybody else's feelings and so you just don't do it. This one's for you. Okay, because what a narcissist does is they push on everybody's boundaries. And if you don't have any, it's a wide open door for a narcissistic person to manipulate you. They will come in and they will take a hold of that and start creating a world where you can't even make a choice about anything in your life. All right. So and they're attracted to you because they can do that. And because what a narcissist is after to get back to the topic here is control. They're after control and supply. They like to manipulate the world around them to serve the face, the mask, the deception of what their ego is telling them they are. So another thing, if you are needing help with anything, check out the information in, in the description of every video. There's information on group coaching, coaching, and peer support. You may be seeing a lot of yourself in this video that you would like to make changes for or like to fortify in your life so that you are not attracting and maintaining relationships with toxic people. That a lot of people I speak with, they are so nice, <laughs> right? So loving, so kind, and so distant from themselves. They are so, have such trouble staying grounded and rooted inside their body. We, they've learned to disassociate. They've learned to, um, and this is more about like an empathic person who is a trauma survivor as well, perhaps, or someone that has been misunderstood their whole life and have had their empathy used their whole life, whether it's been by toxic people or just because life's kind of brutal like that. So they don't have a, a, um, the tools and the experience of staying grounded inside their body staying does, does that make sense like staying um present to themselves while they're talking to other people they lose themselves in the empathy they lose themselves in the experience of other people giving to them or what looks like giving to them they get lost in the love bombing and the and because it feels good right and because they're not or it feels so uncomfortable that they just like remove themselves from the from the building right and when you're vacant guess what gets in anything that wants all right and a narcissist wants in they want in your psyche and they want control of your mind so learning to stay grounded as an empathic person learning to stay present to yourself learning to have that presence where you are like a witness in your own life as well as participant important narcissists see the giving nature of empathic people. They're absolutely aware of how giving you are. They're watching. They're paying attention to the things you're saying. They're, they're in fact, maybe mirroring it and saying, oh, I do that too. I'm so giving. I'm so wonderful, right? And they want that because it's all about supply. It's control and supply. Control of the world around them to maintain and fortify the mask and the ego. And then supply of the attention that helps to fortify the ego. It's all about the ego. It's all about preserving who they believe they are. To be aware that when people are taking advantage of that nature or when there's kind of a focus on it or when, or just knowing that if down the line, it feels like you're doing all the giving and they're doing all the taking, something's up. Empathic people, whether or not they stay slow in relation. So when I say slow down, okay, I'm going to backtrack here. When I say slow down, when you meet people, whether no matter what the relationship is, or if you're engaging with family members who might be toxic, might not be, and I say, slow it down. So this is one of the things I mean. Empathic people tend to give to relationships really quickly, like within seconds. Not, I'm not talking about people pleasing. That's, so if this is the meter, that's like way over here, okay? They, they tend to give still a little too much, too much listening, too much connection, too much being present for someone else, too much taking the back seat, too much giving the other person the reins, right? Giving other the other person the leeway. Too much offering help and support, kindness, affection, friendship, too fast. And like I said, I'm not even talking about codependency or people pleasing. I'm talking about even more um, just simply having empathy at a high level and connecting to people. We tend to be people who relate easy to others. And in that relating, we are giving the other person a gift, right, of that relating. And we tend to do it really fast, okay? Well, 
a narcissist, see, that's the perfect opening for the love bombing to start in the grooming. Because if they give it back to you, I mean, how many people give it back to you? Not very many, right? Unless you meet someone who's also that way. And then you're like, if you're, if you're looking for a red flag, you're like, what's the matter with that? All right. But a narcissist will see that quickly giving and they will start quickly taking. And they love it because that sets the precedent. And it's like it rings the tone of what the relationship will sound like. So meeting new people, especially if it's dating, don't be given stuff away <laughs> for real. You wait till you know someone before you cook them dinner, offer to do favors, drive them places, pick them up, um, whatever it is, the things you would do for a friend friend, wait till they're a friend friend and see. Oftentimes, if we look back, we go, oh my gosh, I completely gave to this relationship really fast and lost myself within the first 10 minutes. I was giving, giving, giving. And it, even, even people who don't tend to be super people pleasers can do this. Okay. Another reason that narcissistic people are so attracted to and then tend to target empathic people is compassion. <laughs> the covert narcissist thinks that they have the same compassion or they want you to think that they have the same compassion or they truly believe that because they do X, Y, and Z, which is beneficial to people, that that makes it okay to be not so great otherwise. All right, so they because they don't take accountability, right? So a covert narcissist will be mirroring and also matching. And also they tend to be people who are more um, the vulnerable narcissist, right? They will do the good deeds and be nice to other people and be friendly sometimes. And then till they're not. And it's not just a bad mood, you guys. When a covert narcissist flips, it's not just someone in a bad mood. That's what it looks like for a long time. More on covert narcissism on the other videos. But you know what I mean. Okay. Anyway, they, it's about the compassion. They want your compassion, especially the vulnerable narcissist. They see themselves as a victim and you're giving them compassion. It's perfect. All right. They want your empathy uh, all for themselves. So yeah, they, th that's a major reason they want your empathic nature as their personal like empath genie right? You'll, you'll do everything they want. And then they can put you away in the bottle when they're not interested. It's what they do. Oh, they sense your desire to help and heal others. Ooh, as an empathic person, many of us are healers in one way or another in their life. They know it. They sense it. They feel it. They use it. Okay. They want it for themselves. A lot of narcissistic people are also survivors of something in their life or have had a lot of hurt or have a lot of self, okay, even if they're not, because of the lack of accountability, everything that they've ever done in their life, and we all do things, right, that aren't perfect, everything they've ever done in their life that is toxic, they're pretending they didn't do. They're sticking it way in the back of their mind, and they're presenting the world with the mask of perfection, of the good guy, of this, of that, especially the covert narcissist, right? There's a lot of pain in there that they won't face. There's a lot of shame and self-hatred that a narcissist won't face. That's why it's called a delusion of grandeur, right? It isn't grandeur. It isn't that they are that great. It's a delusion that they are that great. But that's all still in there. And they're expecting you, because you're so healing and giving, to come on in and take their pain and transform it somehow and plant it back to them as something wonderful. So they're using you for that. Empathic people tend to give good focus and attention to others. Just tend to, tends to be a superpower. So of course, the ever seeking attention starved narcissist, that's exactly what they want, they eat it up, right? Empathic people tend to boost up other people's self-esteem. We don't tend to kick people when they're down. We don't tend to knock people down and we don't tend to bad mouth or criticize other people often, okay? We tend to build people up, especially those we care about. Well, what's more perfect for a narcissist, right? All right, and in the last thing I have here is in empathic, uh, empathic people tend to see the good in others, even to a fault, you guys, even to a fault. We tend to see how people could be. We, say, we see people's potential. Is that not true? I mean, I know for myself it has been and it's gotten me into trouble. 
more than once and probably will because I don't want to lose that in myself. But what I need to do is get smart with it. And so do you maybe, right? To get wise with it so that, yeah, of course you give people chances. And of course you see the good in people. I couldn't coach if I didn't do that. If I did not see people's amazing potential and their beauty and their strengths and all of that for them sometimes while they're sitting there feeling low self-esteem and horrible because of narcissists in their life, how could I do what I do, right? And I personally am aware that when someone is seeking that, when someone is pulling it out and like drawing it out of me, when someone has given enough chances and they don't make changes, when someone quits taking accountability or never has taken accountability, when someone will not face who they are in order to make themselves better on their own and expects me to do the work for them, that that's a problem. And so no thank you. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.